So I wanted to talk about the importance of intervaginal work beyond just traditional pelvic floor physical therapy. So most people, um, again, if they're lucky and they're having some issues with their bladder or prolapse or just all things down yonder, um, women, um, they're referred to pelvic floor physical therapy and that's, they're looking at the muscles, the strength, the tone. Um, sometimes they get in there and work a little deeper on muscles of the hip. And, but normally that work is not done unless someone is having bladder issues, prolapse issues, pain with sex, um, any other pelvic floor issues. So what I wanted to share and what's really important is when I incorporate intervaginal work and why I incorporate intervaginal, intervaginal work sometimes. So um, just today, as I was treating a patient, um, this patient, significant back pain for a long time sciatica. And again, the damage is up there at L4, L5, it's up a little bit higher. And you can see where there's been a lot of compression. There's a lot of extension force. Um, her leg swings are not as clear. So again, there's a lot of damage and wear and tear at that L4, L5. And then that's irritating the disc, irritating the nerve root. So it's been a long time and you know she's been through traditional treatments and has still struggled. So what I see is I look at her as I look at her biomechanically, I watch how she walks and I see how hard it is for her to get through her pelvis. So then as I get her on the table, and I break that down into leg swings too, but then I put her on the table and as I take that leg back, I kind of lock up the pelvis, I bring that leg back, I say, wow, that leg really can't get back. She mechanically, structurally cannot get that leg back there to have an efficient gait. And without that efficient gait, she's going to continue to shear at her lumbar spine. So as we kind of break that down, okay, well, why doesn't she have it? It's not a tight muscle. Yes, there's some tightness, but again, it's not a tight muscle. You know, is there some viscera from the front organs that are not allowing the leg to come back? Um, in her case, a big player was the tailbone and in back pain, the tailbone is a big, big, big player. And again, what happens is a long time ago, somebody falls and the tailbone gets jammed up. So tailbone gets jammed up into the sacrum. And then we have this block that doesn't move well person keeps moving, leg swings. So where's the next area of movement is up here at the lumbar spine. So over time we get those shear forces. So um, in my practice, when I do treat low back pain, I do do a lot of interrectal. I do coccyx decompression and you'll find me on the coccyx.org website. And again, up at our level, we have this training to do internal work. And again, we're very discreet. We're very, um, you know, we talk about it. We make sure that we have consent and all that and explain what we're doing. So as we work internal coccyx, uh, we can decompress the tailbone off the sacrum and just get some strain off that low back, improve the leg swing. So there's less strain on that low back. But so in this woman's case, we did do two um, uh, sessions on working on the tailbone decompression and we're getting some great gains. But as I worked with her again today, it just there was this hardness again. It, it's getting softer, but still, I didn't like how hard that was. So, and again, as we went into the pelvis, that listening took me to the pelvic floor. So then we start to ask those next questions. How was childbirth? So she had had an episiotomy and had some tears. So we absolutely have some scar tissue there. She denied there was no pain with sex, no trouble with intercourse, which is a wonderful thing, no prolapse or bladder issues. So again, those symptoms would have brought her into pelvic floor physical therapy. And then maybe she would have gotten some internal work. So um, again, the beauty of this is, hey, here I've got, you know, what's on the front of the sacrum and the tailbone. I needed to get internal and I needed to get intervaginally because I wanted to know what was going on at the pelvic floor um, between the vaginal opening and the rectal opening scar tissue wise. So as we went intervaginally, we were able to work anterior coccyx, we we're able to work hip internal external rotation. And this was really important because again, we're able, as we get work intervaginally, we're able to get to the anterior aspect of the sacrum. We're able to get to the nerve roots. We're able to get to piriformis. We're able to get to some of those rotators of the hip. And again, we couldn't access it from the external as well as we could from the internal. So I just wanted to share, this is an, it was an important part in treat, treatment for her. And again, as she gets off the table, we retest neural tension, neural tension is good. And just, she says, wow, it just, it's so much lighter, so much easier for her pelvis to move. So I just wanted to bring light to how important intervaginal work is to treating um, people with back pain. Uh, another patient I just treated this week, she was post hip replacement. And we've treated intervaginally before, before her hip replacement, again, just getting inside that pelvic bowl, we're able to access things from inside and help mobilize and restore some mechanics as much as we can. But her complaint, she was having some pain with sex post, post hip replacement. 
So we were able to get in there and wow, the tightness, we found that we weren't able to find or access that tightness from the outside. So we were able to go intervaginally and work all through the pelvis to free up some of those tensions to make sure that there's give when, when there is, when there's pressure and repeated pressure that the tissues can absorb the pressure and um, she can enjoy relationships. So that is what I wanted to share today. Again, make sure you are trained. You cannot do this work unless you have upper level training um, by, by someone who knows the work really, really well. But please, please don't exclude that from consideration. And if you don't have that in your skill set, please make sure you find someone who does have that so that they can, your patient can have that opportunity to have a little deeper um, opportunity for improved movement through the pelvis.